Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ, and today we're back with the fourth episode of the Random Card Challenge. If you haven't seen any of the previous three, you can check them out below, they'll be linked in the description. Basically, using my old Pokemon card collection, I draw a different team for every major battle using the Pokemon available at the time. Right now, what you're watching is all of the Pokemon being added that are available before facing Gary in the Pokemon Tower in Lavender Town. With Cut now available to us, a lot of areas open up. The cards being added are for Vulpix, Eevee, Vaporeon, Onix, Graveler, and Mr. Mime. This is also the point where I removed all of the previously drawn cards from the deck. For the first time in the series, we'll have to draw five Pokemon for a battle, so let's get into it. First up, we've got Eevee, that's a new one. There were quite a lot of Eevee cards that went in. Secondly, we have Mankey. This is pretty good. Thirdly, Pikachu. There are a lot of Pikachu cards as well. Diglett up fourth. Again, this is this is a good team. No fully evolved. And Meowth. Okay, so all first stage, but a pretty good team. Here's what our team looks like for the Pokemon Tower Rival Battle. Pikachu is at level 22 with Shockwave, Quick Attack, Double Team, and Thunder Wave. Diglett's at level 20, and his moveset's made up of Scratch, Sand Attack, Magnitude, and Dig. At level 23, Mankey has the moves Karate Chop, Leer, Fury Swipes, and Low Kick. Eevee is level 25 with Quick Attack, Sand Attack, Growl, and Dig. And finally, Meowth is also at 25 with Scratch, Growl, Faint Attack, and Payday. Okay, let's get into the battle. As always, Gary sends out his Pidgeotto to start the battle, and we lead off with Pikachu. A Shockwave cuts away just over half of Pidgeotto's health before the normal flying type lands a Sand Attack. Then, a Quick Attack crits Pikachu, almost knocking her out in one. She survives on 5 HP though, and a second shockwave does just enough to earn us the first win of the battle. Then, for some reason, Gary sends in Gyarados. The rest of my team really isn't equipped to deal with the not a dragon dragon. Electric moves are of course 4 times effective though, so shockwave lands right out the gate and takes Gyarados into orange health. The water flying type then thrashes Pikachu into unconsciousness, so we switch in Eevee. She lands a quick attack immediately, which is met by a second thrash. Another quick attack follows, but Gyarados lives through it with just one hit point remaining. The final hit of Thrash takes Eevee into red health, but Gyarados is now confused and while he swims in a circle trying to figure out where he is, she lands a third quick attack to finish him off. Growlithe comes out next for our rival, and after intimidating Eevee, she goes underground preparing to use Dig. Growlithe uses Ember, but with nobody there to burn up, he misses the mark. Eevee then lands Dig to deal some serious damage. With his target now in front of him, Growlithe fires a second ember in Eevee's direction and makes contact. With a solitary hit point left though, she stays on her feet. After digging down to avoid a finishing blow, Eevee hits Growlithe hard, knocking him out. Gary sends in Kadabra fourth, and not knowing if we'd outspeed, I just played it safe and went for quick attack. With his low defense, the shot chips away around 50% of Kadabra's health before one confusion finally takes out Eevee. We send in Diglett next and shake things up with magnitude. Even though he only manages to pull off a 50 base power move, it breaks through Kadabra's frail defense and finishes him off. That leaves Gary with just one. His level 25 Ivysaur comes out last, and I really wanted to use my whole team, so I just settled on using Sand Attack. One Razor Leaf obliterates Diglett and makes it a 2 on 1. Mankey's our next Pokemon, and he gets to work quickly with Leer. Another Razor Leaf just about gets Mankey's HP below half. We go for Leer again, and Ivysaur misses with Razor Leaf. One more Leer further softens up Ivysaur before a crit Razor Leaf knocks out Mankey. The final matchup of the battle will see Ivysaur facing off against Meowth. Payday doesn't do quite as much as I was hoping it would, but luckily Ivysaur's Sleep Powder misses. Payday lands again and takes Ivysaur into definite one-shot range. Luckily, the Evolved Grass starter doesn't go for Sleep Powder and instead punts for Razor Leaf again. It's not a critical hit though, and Meowth survives. A third payday finishes off Gary's final Pokemon, and yeah, that was lucky. If Ivysaur had landed Sleep Powder or just gone for back-to-back -back Razor Leafs, we would have lost. For the gym battle with Erica, I actually added all of the Pokemon available in Pokemon Tower, because I wasn't thinking. In my head, you only needed the Silph Scope for Marowak, I'm not entirely sure why. We did at least add some correct Pokemon who are available through evolutions, namely Persian, Machoke, Primeape, and Dugtrio. Anyway, let's draw our team for the Celadon Gym Battle. 
He has three Pokemon, two level 29s and a 24, and our first is going to be Mr. Mime. That will be super helpful. Pidgey as well is another great draw. This is a great team. And Bellsprout for like the ninth time. I have too many Bellsprout cards. Anyway, here's what our team looks like for the battle with Erica. Pidgey's at level 24 with Tackle, Sand Attack, Gust and Quick Attack at his disposal. Mimeon the Mr. Mime is at level 29 with Psybeam, Light Screen, Substitute and Magical Leaf. If you don't know, you can only get Mr. Mime by trading in this game, so that's why he has the weird nickname. Lastly, also at 29, Bellsprout has Vine Whip, Growth, Sleep Powder and Cut, which we needed to reach the gym. Right, let's start the battle. Erica leads off with Victory Bell, and Pidgey's up first on our side. She starts with Stun Spore, which paralyzes the tiny bird Pokemon and stops him from attacking. Acid then hits hard before Pidgey breaks through Paralysis and replies with Gust to deal some damage. A second Acid quickly knocks out Pidgey and takes us down to two. Not a great start. Mr. Mime comes in next, and one super effective Psybeam levels the playing field. Tangela is Erica's second Pokemon, and we switch into Bellsprout. For the next two minutes, basically nothing happened. It was essentially that Metapod versus Metapod matchup, because once Tangela used in Grain, there wasn't much we could do. Bellsprout was using Sleep Powder and Cut, but Tangela was constantly healing up. Slowly but surely, Bellsprout whittled Tangela down into red health, but Eric used a damn Hyper Potion. After one final Sleep Powder, I decided that she'd won the Battle of Stubbornness, and switched back out to Mr. Mime. One Psybeam cut down the sleeping Pokemon and made me wonder why I'd just wasted two minutes of my life. Vileplume comes out last for Erica, and once again Mr. Mime goes for Psybeam. That takes the flower Pokemon into red health before Stun Spore paralyzes Mime in. With Paralysis now in effect, Vileplume outspeeds Mr. Mime and gets off a Giga Drain. That heals her up a small bit, but not enough to live through a final Psybeam. Mr. Mime has earned us the Rainbow Badge almost single handedly. Unfortunately, I only have one Mr. Mime card, so that's it for him, he's now out of rotation. His one performance was a memorable one though. That'll do it for this episode. If you're one of the many people who subscribed since the last episode of this series came out, welcome! My series are all incredibly inconsistent, so sorry about that. I hope you all enjoyed, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.